Yo, what's up, guys? This is Cruz Pike. My friends call me Big C. Back in action today, I got a cool video for you that I want to show you some of the best parts using the Heartbeat tool. In particular, we're going to look at a guy who built a video game by himself. His name is Gavin. He's with Two Star Games. And he didn't just build a regular video game. He built a highly popular game called Choo Choo Charles. This game made tons of sales in 2022 2023 it was a viral hit there was 100 million views on on launch day across social media platforms youtube etc and just an amazing story and in this video he's going to talk about how he came up with the idea where he got his assets from you know where did he how did he create the the backgrounds the music all that stuff but without going into like extreme technical detail I wanted to share the, these moments with you because if you're thinking about getting into something like this, this is a great video for you guys to get inspired by. So here we go. Let's kick into it. All right. So if you're following along with me, here we are. I'm on the homepage of Heartbeat or H.KI. I'll put a link in the description below, of course. And then when I click on moments here, let's just go ahead and click on moments. You're going to see here I've got tons of moments, but I've got about 20, 22 from this video alone. This has a ton of great information about creating a video game, especially if you're a one man or one woman or one person team. So here we go, let's click on it, let's start it off. The first one's called Secrets to Creating a Game Alone. In this video, me and my buddy Gavin, the creator of Choo Choo Charles, discuss his secrets to making an indie game completely alone. Look at that here on the right side, you'll see here that I've got all the moments here and they're all kind of uh, chronological here. So let's skip forward here. Through the introduction here, they do a little intro, but we don't really want to see that. Let's get to the first good moment, or the big moment, which is day number one. This is the first thing you do, day one. Game. So let's go all the way back to the beginning of production. I, I would love it to be a more technical conversation about the <laughs> yeah, tools sure. you used and how you made this game, because I look at it and I'm like, I was pretty frustrated, to be completely honest with you, when I first saw it, because I was thinking, how did he do this? And that's fair. He also sold... Who knows how many thousands of copies. He had 550,000 wish lists on Steam, I think, even before it launched. Pretty amazing stuff. So let's go ahead and take a look at how did he come up with the backstory for this game. Yeah, so I guess I'll just quickly go over the tools that I use just for, for reference for everybody. So I'll use Unreal Engine 4 for Chuchu Charles. I'm now on Unreal Engine 5, which is basically the same thing for anybody wondering. Yeah. I use GIMP for all of my 2D art, and then I use Blender for any custom 3D stuff that I what? So I'll stop it there just to make a quick note. GIMP is a free tool. Uh, most people use Photoshop or Illustrator or something like that. He uses GIMP and GIMP's free. So keep that in mind. Blender is also a free tool. So if, if you're thinking about getting into gaming and making a game, but you know, you don't have the tools. Well, a lot of these tools, just like these ones are completely free. What's your 2D art, by the way, just, just for clarity. You'll see. Yeah, yeah. So uh, 2D art, that's going to be anything like marketing materials, poster art, stuff like that, or texture art. What I did with a lot of Choo Choo Charles in order to kind of set apart the style, because I think that, you know, just having a, just a unique art style is, it's good for your branding and it's good for a game's recognizability. True. So what I do is when I download assets, which is something that I do a lot in order to speed up development, I'll take the textures, throw them into GIMP, and I'll draw over the textures. So there you heard it there. So he's putting it into GIMP, GIMP's free. You can download uh, packs, either paid for packs, if you, you know, if you've got the money and you want to, you know, save some time, or you can download free packs and work with them, and then you just modify them or augment them with your own art to give it that unique style. It's a pretty cool idea, and it saves you a lot of money, a lot of time. So let's skip forward now to pre-production. Let's take a look at what he went through for on the pre-production side of things. A production standpoint, I think one of the main things was the pre-production on Choo Choo Charles was very fast. It was very, very fast, uh, rushed even. I spent probably about two weeks concepting the game, trying to think of unique characters that I could throw in there, uh, some fun gameplay with like an easy, easy enough to make gameplay loop. And so after two weeks, I had a pretty solid idea of like kind of the, kind of the foundation. So there you heard it there. It took him about two weeks to come up with the idea and to flesh it out. And to be fair, he used pen and paper, right? Like he wrote it down and uh yeah i went into his uh, his gaming documents so that's pretty cool there in terms of the spider train let's listen to how he came up with that idea the spider train uh which is basically what really sold the game was this cool viral train going around doing 
spidery thing. So here we go. Let's click forward to three minutes and six seconds. And I knew that there should be a spider train. Now, I hope you don't gloss over that because that's why this game is why. I mean, I don't want to I, I don't want to discredit your ability to create a great game that looks beautiful. But the spider train is why it may correct me if I'm wrong, but that's why the game was wildly successful. That's why it was viral. Yeah, which yeah, for sure, which was needed. Right. I mean, you, you do you mm -hmm. need that virality? It's crucial. OK. Right. So there you go. That's uh, another important point there. Uh, let's Kate, he goes uh, in a few seconds he's going to talk about how he came up with the idea and and make special note of this because there's nothing too crazy about this you we all have ideas uh his was 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 pretty simple just went back to his childhood here we go wake up one night in like spider train i was trying to think of ways because i was seeing kind of this trend and it's become a, a very popular trend in in horror these days to the point it's too popular now, by the way. They overdid it. But he was in before all that, so he gets a good pass on this one. Point where a lot of people are actually pretty sick of it. But at the <laughs> time, this trend didn't really exist. It wasn't a widespread thing that people knew about. So I had noticed that games like Five Nights at Freddy's mm -hmm. or Bendy and the Ink Machine were taking characters that were kind of nostalgic, and then they would put them in a horror context. And so I was trying to think of things that most people would have been familiar with as kids. So, if you think about this, Winnie the Pooh uh, just went out of copyright protection because it's over 100 years old or whatever. So Winnie the Pooh is no longer owned by Disney or whoever owned it. So uh, there's an idea in there. Think about it, guys. That I could turn into a spooky character. Right. And so I was realizing, you know, there's really not that many horror games based on um, kids TV shows and so for me my favorite TV show when I was growing up was Thomas the Tank Engine what I did I was, I was like well, well, psh, well let's take Thomas mm -hmm. take Thomas make him spooky make him scary make him evil and so that was really what I kind of based the game around and that's really the whole thing guys that's how easy it is to come up with ideas now ideas are a dime a dozen it's the execution of course that really matters but if you're hung up on hey I don't have any ideas as simple as thinking about something from your childhood that's all it took to get this one going so something definitely to keep in the back of your mind uh let's skip forward a little bit here we're gonna go to five minutes here uh and he's gonna talk about how he how he produced it in particular how he came up with the idea and then he sort of created it as he went here we go Pretty much, I decided, okay, these are the confines that I'm going to work within, and I'm going to stick to this because I think this is really solid, and all the, you know, figuring out how the individual missions are going to work, figuring out specifically how the AI is going to function, exactly how the game is going to end, things like that I'll figure out as I go. So this actually prevents something developers and uh, project managers and stuff like that call analysis paralysis, where you can get stuck just thinking over things and thinking and thinking and thinking and then not doing. And a lot of times you just have to take the jump and then, you know, just know that as you go, you'll come up with new ideas and uh, new paths and new doors will open. So there you go. There's a quick overview here. Let's skip forward a little bit more. Uh, he's going to talk about the launch and the first month and what he did in the first month, his production time and stuff like that. So let's click, let's take forward to uh, month one. In the first month of development, my goal was to create a trailer and screenshots and a description of the game that I could use to launch a Steam page and the game trailer and kind of gauge interest to start gaining wish lists. So, I... so there you go. His first month, he had a very clear goal. Create the trailer, create a description, get some screenshots, get some stuff going, try and get on some Steam wish list. That was it. That's what he charged out for. Let's go now to the six minute mark where he talks about the actual production time production time it's just time to really focus in on building out all of the systems you said earlier i figured that i needed weapons i needed a train i needed to be able to color my train was this all just written down or was it a prototype yeah so this is just written down okay um, so you did a in, gdd you know, in the first couple yes yeah absolutely ah. you need a gdd it's not a ged because you know i don't have one of those oh hell no this is a gdd game design document everyone watching you need a GDD. <laughs> if you're working on any project larger than a game jam game, you need a game design document. You know, organize your thoughts, organize your ideas, um, keep track of what you're doing, and make notes. When I look at, so there you go. There's another really interesting point that he brings up there. 
Uh, we're going to skip forward here and let's talk about how he does his sound design. We're going to focus on more of the sound effects, but I will note up front here that he has a friend of his that he got to help out with the sound, uh, like the sound of background music. He's a very good musician and uh, he brought a friend in on this. So let's skip forward to sound design. Let's move on to, unless I'm missing something here, can we move on to sound? Because the sound is great in the game. down what you use for sound including where you're sourcing some sounds if you did source them yes pretty much all the sounds used in the game are based off of sounds i got on freesound.org and freesound.org i gotta look that one up because i don't think i've used that or i did use it a few years ago but i sort of let that lapse so freesound.org get a lot a whole bunch of great uh, sounds there didn't know that so you learned something here at least i learned something in this one uh, so there we go. Free sound is the other one. And then finally, I want to skip forward to the end here and let's talk about his launch, the player reception and what he was afraid of, what went well, etc. And then we'll wrap it up. Launch. We don't have to talk about specific numbers, but I just love to hear how launch went for you. Yeah, so I was definitely nervous. I think the biggest thing that I was worried about leading up to launch was just the player reception. It had gotten enough attention prior to launch. I, had, I launched with 550,000 wish lists. So... Oh. That's a lot for an indie game, by the way. Oh, crap. It's like, I knew that people were going to buy it. Um, I just was really worried <laughs> as to whether or not they would like it and if they would be pleased with their purchase. So mm -hmm. that was the biggest thing that I was nervous about going into it. Ultimately, I think the launch was about as, as chill as it could have been. Mm. Um, pretty much, I, I am a big fan of, like, tools down like a month before launch like have a solid build that's completely done the build that i'm going to publish and sit on it for one month now that doesn't mean i'm just sitting around for a month yeah. that means that last month there is spent just strictly doing tons of marketing stuff making trailers good. making videos writing up press releases getting uh, lists of influencers to send keys to it's a bit so there you go you heard it there so that's what he does well his last month He's, it's basically locked down, and then he switches back into marketing. Now, in a lot of worlds, you'd think, well, why doesn't your marketer do that? But keep in mind, he's a one-man team. If you're a video creator watching this, there's a good chance that you are a one-person team. You create the videos, you create the thumbnails, you create the audio, or you download the audio, you edit it. You do all of that, and he did all of that for this game. And that's why I like this video so much. I learned a lot in it, guys. If you... Like this video, of course, give it a like, uh, subscribe, do all that good stuff. I've got a ton more stuff coming up. Stay tuned.